Production support for Hot and Cold is brought to you by American Solar Technics, manufacturers of components for wood burning and solar heating systems. Hey, I'm Tom Gozi. Welcome to Hot and Cold. Well, it's autumn. There ain't no doubt about it anymore. We're up here in Orono, Maine. We're going to visit with Dick Hill. We've got some very interesting stuff to look at today, as always, whenever we come to see Dick Hill. He's got some cool stuff. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Well, that's the Edith Patch Summer House overlooking the Stillwater River, which is in Dick Hill's backyard. 1903, I believe. Nice little place, beautiful setting, and you can see Dick has had some forestry done here, had some uh, pruning on these nice old spruce trees. But we're going to go inside because we're outside of his um, summer house slash winter house. Actually, I think he calls it the greenhouse. It's an uh, insulated structure we looked at a little while ago. And this part of it is a screened-in porch. And come on inside. Okay, so we're coming inside. This is uh, this front section here is uninsulated, screened-in porch. And then we have insulated panels that flip down for winter time. And we come into the insulated section, which we're just about ready to use, Dick. Well, someday. Someday, <laughs> soon. <laughs> soon, I think. Jeepers, yeah. it's a little brisk out. And over here, we have um, have a new kind of wood stove. Yes, indeed. Uh, I've got some uh, bricks, appropriately, left over from the patch house, which I purchased from the university. Yeah. And it has holes in it, and uh -huh. what I've done is I laid the bricks up this way, yeah. and I have uh, bolts that go all the way through the holes in the bricks. Yeah. And they come out the back, and in the back there are my uh, springs. So the whole assembly is pinched with uh, uh, spring-loaded rods, mm -hmm. which means that the big gasket in here stays uh, pinched as ah. the stuff expands and contracts. It doesn't open up. Uh, doesn't open up big cracks. Now this is a masonry stove. This is a masonry stove. Now inside nice of the <laughs> inside of these bricks, I built a uh, hardware cloth cage. And I just uh, supported it in a very clumsy, awkward way. Mm -hmm. But I used that as a form to pour refractory. So the okay. cast refractory is a big arch inside that goes down the inside of the bricks. And as I assumed would happen, the hardware cloth is all uh, is all melted out and burned out and gone away. Mm -hmm. But the refractory is obviously ah. still uh, still intact. But it means you don't get much heat out of the, through the bricks because there's a, it'll take a long Boy, time. Cool. Yeah, you know, it'll take a long time for the energy to get through that. You just let this off. I a just while I ago. just let it off. So all of the energy has got to come out of the uh, out of the smoke pipe and mm -hmm. off of off of the deck here at the moment. Okay. So One this is that, excuse me. This is uninsulated pipe right. here up to this point where it transits through the roof. That's right. And metal one metal. of the uh, designs of this kind of a chimney is this is a slip joint here. Yeah. This is all sheet metal screws here, yep. but this is allowed to to come and go. And Tom, one thing that really surprised me about this is mm -hmm. I, I got the door from uh, Albie Barden, uh, and he uses it for his masonry stoves. Yep. And I just knew that the diameter of the chimney, the height of the chimney, and the size of the door was going to spill smoke because the door is too big. Ah. But I'm very pleased and surprised to find out that, uh, that it doesn't significantly spill smoke, a little bit. But I can open the door and it uh, seems to clear. Yeah. Now, one of the interesting designs of this stove, uh, stove door is this cast iron plate mm -hmm. here. And you see the air comes in here, and the air then has two paths ah. underneath and over the top. And this obviously uh, preheats the, uh, mm -hmm. the combustion air. Nice. So that the, uh, the air that, that gets into the combustion zone has already gone through a heat transfer process so that it, uh, 
presumably is one. And you can see the cast refractory, and you can see some of the remnants of my uh, hardware cloth that I used as, as the form. Slowly melts away. Slowly, slowly being destroyed. Now, you destroyed. haven't fired this very much. No, I haven't. It hasn't been that cold yet. No, no, that's right. I fired it two or yeah. three times just to make sure that everything worked and nothing cracked mm -hmm. and so on. Yeah. So the, the path now, if, if Rick, if you want to take a look down inside the firebox there, I'll get out of your way. The, um, so we, we have castable refractory that curves Yes, makes the, it you can see how, how, how thick this is here, yeah. and the brick is only about this thick. So, right. that the, so half the wall is half refractory. Half the wall is gas refractory. Now, where does the smoke go to get to there? Yeah, you it, have a uh, little path. Yeah, it, there's a, uh, there's a, you can see, if you look in there, you can see the flame uh, coming up through. Um, mm -hmm. Right uh, now, stainless, it's not, yeah, stainless it's steel not doing screen. it right now. Well, it is in the back one. Oh, okay. If you, you have one of And look back, you can oh. see the, uh, you can see so the flame coming up through. Oh, yeah, maybe you can get in there. Of right course, angle. what happens, as soon as you open this, you destroy the whole process because cold air is now being swept, right. in, swept right. in the opening. But we can see the flame coming through. See the flame coming through. But the, and, and that flame is coming through a uh, heavy gauge stainless steel uh, screen, which uh, in theory should uh, provide an ignition source for that part of the uh, combustion products. So that's incandescing. It's glowing. Right. And, and right. by glowing, unburned materials hit that glowing surface and, and, burn. and burn. Now, do you have those little tubes in this? Uh, no, the tubes are in the one that I, I re rebuilt uh, for oh, my Oh, my oh okay. Yeah. And, and, and that seems to be working fine, yeah. And now, this, this refractory on the back, maybe we want to take a look at that, okay. Rick. I'll and sneak that, in the corner here. Re that's got reinforcing in it. Yeah, this um, is uh, about two inches thick of refractory, and we've got these nice springs. These are different springs yeah. than the last one. I didn't, uh, I didn't get the valve springs this time. Ah. But they're, uh, they're stiff enough so that yeah. they, uh, they really pinch everything together. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask about the crack in the back here. Well, actually, it's two layers of cast refractory with uh -huh. uh, reinforcing in each layer. So okay. that I, I don't have any concern about that, about yeah. that failing. Now, this is warmer. Yes. This is a yep. nice... Because it doesn't have the thickness of the heat capacity yeah. that the, uh, the stove itself does, where we have the, two, the bricks and the uh, refractory. Yeah. And one, uh, the, uh, you, I took your lead and uh, bought one of these handsome little radiation devices. Yeah. And it's interesting to note that uh, that's off scale. Oh. See, that's over 500. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, once, you, uh, once you get around to here, uh, we're back on scale. That's 3.0. 302. Mm -hmm. So you've got a substantial temperature drop from the smoke color here around to the T. Yeah. And I, I love these T's because this gives me a chance to inspect the chimney without going on the roof. I can take that T off and look up the chimney. Yep. Uh, I can take this T off and I can, I thought I might need it to help start the fire. Let's push a newspaper in and light it to get some stack draft, but I don't right. need to. Right. This thing lights and takes off beautifully. Mm -hmm. And now if we get up here to the top, uh, the uh, temperature is 260. Mm -hmm. So the, the energy, we're over 500 here and we're yeah. 260 here. So the bulk of the energy is coming off of the uh, chimney. Counter. So you're happy that, that it's exchanging heat while yes. you're getting good yes. efficiency. Uh, there's one significant design flaw in it though, Tom, and that uh -oh. is, you can see this is dished. Yeah. And I've got uh, book, I've got an awful lot of gaskets in there. I knew it wouldn't stay flat. Mm -hmm. um, but. Uh, I, I may go back to Ames Engineering and ask them to make me another top in which I would uh, take and uh, put it into a mechanical break and, and turn it up and then oh, weld plan. the corners. Yeah. Something so that it had yeah. some stiffness to it. Yeah. But uh, this is not serious because I've got very thick gaskets that almost yeah. compensate for the fact that the thing must well, have Well, this is quarter-inch plate steel up there. That's right. And it's still bowed it's like It's still that. bowed, yes. Wow. Yep. But this is a modular affair, so you oh, can yes. take that right oh, off. Yeah. This, this, is, uh, this has no, no connection at all. You can pick this right up. Ah. Well, Dick, you, you burn wood yes. to keep Ent warm. Entirely. Right. And I thought it'd be good to show folks about the proper way to be dealing with firewood All right. and the way you deal with fire. No, that didn't come out right. The, the <laughs> many proper ways Dick Hill deals with firewood. I could be. Well, I, got, be I, got, I have two tests going on here. Yeah. This was uh, stacked up in June and mm -hmm. I left it uncovered. I'm covering it now I because see. I'm expecting snow at any time. Sure. So uh, this wood is, um, is simply out in the open where the wind can blow around it. And, and uh, over, over behind us is a, uh, is a wood shed, which mm -hmm. is uh, packed much denser, but uh, this wood has been, uh, been covered uh, all the while. Uh -huh. Now, the question <laughs> I'm trying to answer is, uh, does wood left in the open where you have free ventilation around uh, you know, all four sides of it, does that dry faster or slower? Yeah. 
uh, than wood which is uh, completely under cover so yeah. the rain doesn't get at it. Yeah. And in order to, to, uh, uh, to document this, uh, every evil 50th of stick or so, uh, when I put the date on it and I put the, uh, the weight of the stick when I put it in the shed. Mm -hmm. And so then when I uh, take that uh, stick into the house, I weigh it again. And then about every tenth stick again, I put aside mm -hmm. and I keep it all winter in the house yeah. to find out what the oven dried weight of it is. That is, okay. what is the absolute minimum that stick can get. Yeah. So then I have data that says uh, what was the moisture content of the stick when it came, when it was delivered. Yeah. Uh, what was the moisture content of the stick when it came out of the woodshed into the house. Yeah. And then I have the oven dry weight of the, of the wood. Yeah. And then I can make some kind of rough uh, observation as to the extent to which uh, wood of various moisture contents uh, creates creosote and burns evenly and well, so this, on. Well this, just ad hoc mm -hmm. looking at the two piles of wood. Mm -hmm. This looks drier. It yes. looks like it's more checking and, and just appears to be a drier That's right. situation. That's right. Now, I would wonder, I wonder if, um, and that's stacked roughly the same. Well, you have yes. a crisscross. Except but that uh, the, the cover is new. There's a, I'm expecting okay. snow, so I put okay. the cover so, on it. So it was, a, it was exposed to rain and, that's right. and, and wetting and, and drying, where yes. this has always been under cover. That's right. And but, but the, the, the wood in the middle of this pile, of course, never got the ventilation that the wood in the, <laughs> the rest of the pile got. This is got. really deep. This goes yeah. back, what, 12, 16 feet? Oh, yes, yes. You yes. can get up there and take, you a, can get, take a picture of the side of it here to show the... Uh, yeah. Wow, it yeah. goes way back. Yeah, there are five cords in that, and that'll take the, the uh, three apartments that we have, and we'll uh, see us through the winter. Okay. But, um, There's a piece inside we want to take a look okay. at. Okay. So that number mm -hmm. is the original weight of this piece of That's wood. That's last June. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that piece of wood you have sit, does it always sit here now <laughs> next to the flu pipe? <laughs> Kids don't do this at home. <laughs> no, when I leave the house, I take oh. it and set it aside. As long as I'm in the house, I leave it there. Okay. Uh, the, uh, You're heat, uh, truly trying to oven dry it. I'm really trying to oven dry it. This heat exchanger here drops this stack temperature, so this never gets above about 200 degrees. Okay. But even then, I wouldn't leave the house oh, with, with this sitting here. Certainly. And uh, it never gets hot enough so that I can, quote, you know, smell it yeah. and... Uh, and, and whatever. And this is a piece of oak. Yeah, that's and, right. Uh, yeah. it, it's, it feels a fair bit lighter than 8.8 .8 yes. pounds. Well, I, have, I keep a chart on the wall here. Let's, let's of, take a uh, look at that. Of the 8.8 the, the .8 is, the, is the weight at which it came off the woodshed. Yep. And, uh, that's the weight it went into the woodshed in June. Okay. Now, now we're here the 1st of October, and it's dropped to 7.5. The 1st of November, it's 7.3. Uh, and so I'm going, it, obviously this curve will just flatten out here somewhere mm -hmm. by January or so, it, its weight won't change. Okay. Uh, and then I'll know what the, what I would call the oven dry weight is, okay. uh, the equilibrium weight, which is probably 7 to 10 percent moisture. And then you, and then you'll know, you can go back and figure what the original That's right. moisture content of the wood was well, when it landed delivered. here. That's right. Okay. And that varies a great deal because uh, sometimes uh, I'll get a stick that will show no weight change at all. Mm -hmm. In other words, in the forest it was a piece of standing deadwood yeah. <laughs> when yeah. they cut it and brought it in. Yeah. And I will notice that the, I go through this whole drill and it doesn't change in weight at all. Yeah. Uh, which means that uh, it was dry when it, when it, when it was delivered. Okay. Uh, one of the things that I've done is the, uh, the fan arrangement over the top of the stove. As you recall last year I had a very awkward piece of tin work with yeah. a filter in it and a fan. This is incredible. That, uh, that uh, blew down. This. So you that, uh, and the, the thing I was mainly concerned about was the noise. Yeah. Uh, so that, uh, and, and also I had a problem with the with the ceiling. And again, Mike Murray came to my rescue, and mm -hmm. we we pushed the ceiling back up where it belonged, and did some carpentry work there. But now uh, we have around the corner some uh, filters. Mm -hmm. And this little pin that sticks down right there is yep, a is I recognize a that. That came from, uh, <laughs> from my That's a enterprise. <laughs> uh, and when that gets up to oh, 78 degrees or so, mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the fan comes on, which sucks air off of the ceiling through filters, and then yep. blows the air out through this. And so this air then washes down over the stove, and in generally stirs the air in the building. Yep. And Mike gave me a whole bunch of pins around the outside so that when you come in with a wet jacket, you can hang the ah. jacket up and hang it there by the stove. This is so, so <laughs> elegant. I, 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 was I walked into the room here and I, whoa, whoa this is beautiful. And uh, it's all oak. It looks very smart, Dick. Yeah. I mean, you're getting very, very elegant Well, here, this uh, is the last iteration. Uh, no, nothing new. Now, I want to point out to folks that you've... Um, 
Uh, I think this was carpeted before. Yeah, there was a, a, a tile island here. Okay. But it was surrounded by carpet, but the tile is so much better. Yeah. And of course, the tile is on concrete. Yeah. This is a concrete floor on bar joists, so right. that uh, the tile will never crack. Uh, so you've got it, so, and everything's been tiled now. That's right. It really brightened up the room, but also, uh, from a safety point of view, uh, it, you, you should always have your wood stove on something that's not combustible. That's right. And this is the time of year people are looking at wood stoves, thinking about them. They might go out to Uncle Henry's and grab something cheap. Right. If you do that and you're not working with a professional, make sure it's mm -hmm. on something like this or concrete. Mm -hmm. You don't set it on the carpeting. <laughs> and uh, the, the sparks will fly three and a half feet. Yeah. So you can't just uh, come out uh, 18 inches or so. You've right. got to come out a long ways if right. you have carpeting because you'll burn little holes in the carpet yeah. if you aren't careful. Right. So what have we done to the wood stove that's well, no one uh, the, uh, this Well, this heat exchanger was here last time you were mm -hmm. here, but one of the things I've done is uh, I have a, a T here, this was here last time, and yeah. I can take a mirror and put it in here and look right outdoors so right. I can see if there's a, a problem in the chimney. Uh, but I'm getting uh, uh, too old to climb up on the roof and run a brush up and down the chimney, so I put a logging chain inside the chimney. Uh -huh. and and I can do this periodically, yeah. uh, rattle the chain, <laughs> and all of the loose creosote comes tumbling down, yep. and then I can, I can clean it out of this, uh, this opening here. So that's a, that's a, a, new, uh, right. a, new, uh, a new a new a new a new innovation. And of course, we still have the slide that allows us to um, bypass the uh, the pad. And we talked about this last time, but mm -hmm. uh, we that we cut a hole in the uh, existing stove, as you right. can see, this ragged hole. Yeah. And this is a piece of ceramic, and this is a very very high temperature insulation here. Mm -hmm. And what this does is uh, extend the length of the flame path. That is, the flame shines on this, and this will glow red in the normal, in the ordinary right. winter weather. Right. And this again, like the screen on the stove down there, gives an ignition source uh, for uh, the combustion product, so that uh, perhaps it burns somewhat cleaner. Right. I have no data to verify that. Okay. I've never put any uh, instruments on this to determine uh, how much unburned material is actually going in the okay. chimney. So, so all these little refractory things. Let, let's just make a point here. One of the things that you um, uh, quantified back mm -hmm. in the 70s related to wood stoves. Mm -hmm. So there's three criteria mm -hmm. for making a wood stove work properly. The first one is to have adequate temperatures, high right. temperatures, a lot of turbulence, if you mixing. can, mixing, yeah. mm -hmm. and also a, a, uh, a, a place where things incandesce. So anything that's unburned can impact on that and let's call that smoke if the smoke has to pass through something that's glowing All right and it um, takes time and it, yeah. it has some residence time that's there. right hangs around for a few seconds that's right. it will burn much more cleanly and that's what a lot of new wood stoves do this wood stove has been modified to mm -hmm. to make it yeah. perform better in that uh, unfortunately uh, this time of year it's 40 degrees outdoors. Mm. I'm sure it's not working very well chemically sure. because sure. it's simply damped down way too far. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, I'm, th and this will work very well if it were very cold outdoors mm -hmm. in terms of the residence time and the flame path and all the rest of it. Yeah. So I suspect right now it's not performing very elegantly. Well, the, um, uh, you don't use any other fuels in this house, no, do you? No, none whatsoever. Okay. The, the other two apartments both have wood stoves in and uh, mm -hmm. I have a six cords in the woodshed and uh, and that's enough to that's carry. That's enough. The bargain with my tenants is they bring it in from the woodshed and uh, ah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that. One of the things with this fancy little gadget, Tom, is, uh, is interesting. These uh, thermometers here that almost everybody has on their on their wood yeah. stove, uh, and this one now, of course, we're all damped down, reads about 120, and if I uh, check that, uh, well, the surface temperature there reads 143, so um, the, um, well, perhaps it reads 130. So yeah. there's that much difference between what the radiation yeah. device tells us and what this does. But I've been very impressed with these, yeah. the extent to which they give fairly reliable mm -hmm. data. And also, of course, it's great fun. If you, if you have your, use your wood stove to make tea, you can check the temperature of the water for the tea, and that's 182. So just we're right. about ready to have tea. Ah, yeah. just <laughs> You have an experiment that you and I have chatted about on the radio an awful right. lot. Right. And, uh, and that's adding insulation to your refrigerator. Right. Well, over here, you see, I have a watt-hour meter, and yeah. I've had that hooked up to the refrigerator since uh, last May. Mm -hmm. So I had accumulated a considerable amount of data before the insulation was put on. Right. And then I put the insulation on and then uh, continued to run the watt-hour meter. Mm -hmm. And it saves about uh, eight-tenths of a kilowatt-hour a day. Now, that's uh, ten cents a day. Yeah. But when you realize that there are uh, 
hundred million households, yeah. and if the electric rates were the same, this is ten million dollars a day. That's at least one with at least one refrigerator. Your household That's has right. yeah. three, right? Well, no, there are three households. The way yeah. the Census Bureau well, counts yeah. households. Okay, yeah. okay. Uh, the uh, the next thing is that if you uh, multiply a hundred million times three hundred and sixty-five uh, days in the year and eight tenths of a kilowatt hour per day, you come up with thirty billion kilowatt hours. Mm. And that's four big nukes. Yeah. So what you're looking at here... <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's one inch or 1.2 inch foam. Yes. Stuck yeah. on the outside with duct tape. <laughs> we could have done it more elegant, but oh, this yeah. was an experiment. Well, I, th I didn't know whether it would make a contribution or not, but yeah. now that I know what it does, I'm yeah. going to do it again and do, we it, can do, it, do it more elegant. Real fancy. Yeah. Now, I've got, I've got a, uh, you, you caught me in my bread baking cycle, ah. and the uh, door to my oven is out of flat. So I have, to, stick is I have to put this in. Thing. To, to pinch the oven door so that I okay. don't lose a great deal of energy by having the ah. oven door out of flat. So that's all part of the... So there's a, there's a way to solve the <laughs> out of flat oven door problem at the same time. <laughs> Dick is, is notorious or famous for having vein anemometers. And, and a vein anemometer tells you which way air flows. And he has one right up here. And this is a vent that goes up into the attic. And you see this, this is the vein anemometer. It's a little piece of crepe paper. And you see it is moving. See it moving a little bit? That's because air is exiting the house right now. So we have air leaving the house by buoyancy. Now what we've got Dick who's going to run around and change props for us. So Rick, if you first he's going to open the door. Let's watch. Let's do it again. Close the door. Let it, let it stabilize. Okay, now he's going to open the door. Go ahead, Dick. And look what happens. It acts like a bellows. It acts like a bellows. It dropped down a little bit. And then we're going to, what's next? We're going to turn on a bunch of fans. Okay, so watch this. We put on the kitchen fan, and look what happens. Now it's sort of vertical. He's going to put the bathroom fan on. He just did it. You see it pulled out a little more. Yep. Nope. He's going to put on the, uh, open the uh, stove to the wood, the, yeah, the door to the wood stove. And now put on the vacuum, central vacuum. And look what happened. Now we're pulling air into the house. We've From got a air. reverse flow. Right. And this is what happens if you have all these fans on, sucking air out of the house, you will have backdraft problems on your wood stove or your boiler. And this is now, he's going to close the stove door. He just mm -hmm. closed the stove door, and we shut off the vacuum, and yeah, look at that. And now he shuts off the kitchen fan. Oh, he's got it on low. He missed it. But you can see the kitchen fan's still on low, Dick. All right. Ah, we go back to a, a positive vacuum on the house. And the difference here is now the wood stove or the heating appliance would draw properly. If you had a gas heating appliance, right, Dick, right. On, uh, that was not sealed combustion, and all these things were on, you would tend to backdraft into the house carbon monoxide, which is not a good thing. Well, the wood stove, you're just spilling smoke back in, which is stinky, but you know it. With a gas <laughs> appliance, you don't know it and you run the risk of hurting your family and un unfortunately these things happen. So you can make one of these yourself mm -hmm. by taking a piece of toilet paper. <laughs> Dick has made it more compact here. You could take that piece of toilet paper, I'm gonna open the door, and if you hang a piece of toilet paper in a door opening like this, you can see which way the wind's blowing. When you open a door like this that goes outdoors, it's gonna come in this way, probably. Mm -hmm. So it, it is a fun project. Get, a, get some toilet paper, <laughs> uh, unused and uh, hang it with a piece of scotch tape and just watch which way the wind is blowing. This is a very light, easy test that uh, 46 years of engineering skill <laughs> has demonstrated to us and I think you should have a patent on this. We should call this the hill anemometer. <laughs> Because there's another aspect of this, Tom. Yeah. What this shows is that all the while, air from this building is leaking into the attic space and hence leaking outdoors. Right. And that air is more humid than the, uh, than the outdoor temperature. So we may be in trouble as this uh, air with this moisture condenses on cold spaces. Mm -hmm. That's why we ventilate attics. Right. That's why we have soffit vents and why we have ridge vents. Right. So that all this air with, with its high humidity that leaks up into the attic mm -hmm. gets diluted and swept away before it can do any damage. Now, this little aperture you have up yeah. here, is that opened right into the attic? That's open right into the attic. It's not There's going through insulation. No, it's just open. It's a, it's a sh chute that okay. goes right up into the yeah. attic space. Right. It's a nice little ventilator. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. Well, for, for wood heat, it's not too bad. That's <clears> not. If you're heating with electricity, you probably want to fill that up with insulation. That's right. Okay. 
Well, I think we've covered on everything. The bread's out of the oven. All right. So I think we ought to, ought to bid everybody adieu here. Okay. <laughs> Dick has graciously offered us some, some of his nice homemade bread, which smells lovely. <laughs> great, great tip for people. If you're ever selling your house, people are coming to look at it, bake some bread. Yeah they'll buy your house. <laughs> <laughs> Dick's not selling his house. It's too nice. Uh, we gotta go. Production support for Hot and Cold is brought to you by American Solar Technics, manufacturers of components for wood burning and solar heating systems.